And we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God that He is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. And that He is our solid rock, our fortress, our rescuer, our shield, our salvation strength, and our place of safety. Praise God that with Him nothing is impossible. Ah, uh, Lord, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Oh, Lord, thank you that you love me and that you give me comfort like no other. Thank you that you are a God who is well acquainted with all our grief and that you ache when I ache. Help me to remember that in the midst of struggles, trials, and other heartbreak, that you offer hope. You are the author of hope and salvation. I praise you that through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus, all have been made right with you. Allow me to trust your heart and believe that there is more to life than the heartache of this world. Allow me to lean ever closer to you in the midst of this fallen world. Thank you, God, for hope, peace, your love, your comfort, and your salvation. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us now confess our sin.
peace be with you all. And also with you. Let us now join together in the prayer of the day found in our bulletin and answer. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost is a reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord says to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat, the word of the Lord. The song we will read today is uh, parts of Psalm 78. We'll read responsibly. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, raining down man upon them to eat, and giving them rain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and powerfully let out the south wind. Raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Letting them fall in the midst of the camp and round out the dwellings. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading today is a reading from Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. 
We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I suppose in a lot of churches this week, we're going to hear about bread. We're probably going to hear people talking about baking bread. And especially this time of year, zucchini has already ripened. Zucchini bread is being baked in just about every household in our area. But you know how Ron's mind works, especially at 2 o'clock in the morning. Ron is not thinking about baking bread. Ron is thinking about ho-hos and twinkies. <laughs> Why, why would I be thinking about our host of Twinkies? Well, thank you for asking. I will tell you. <laughs> when we sent our kids off to college, maybe even when you went to college, someone warned you in your first year, your freshman year, that you were going to stumble across something called the Freshman 15. Freshman 15 simply means that your first year of college, because you're on your own, doing your own thing, you're going to be eating whenever you want, however you want, you're guaranteed to gain 15 pounds. And that holds true for a lot of people. This past year, we've had another phenomenon. Through this pandemic, we have something called pandemic pounds. It seems that a lot of folks over the course of this pandemic have gained a lot of weight. And here's where the hobos and Twinkies come in. I happened to look at the fourth quarter earnings statement for Hostess. Those are the fine people that brought us hobos and Twinkies. In the fourth quarter of last year, that means October, November, and December, they sold in excess of $246 million worth of hobos and Twinkies. That was in three months. For the year, they are up 10%. Now here's the interesting part for me. They try and do market research and they try and figure out 
how many people are eating it and how often they're eating it. And so they sent out a survey and people actually responded to this survey. And they ask you, how many times during the week do you think you have one of these delicious snacks? And of course, they give you a box for zero, and then one to two, and two to three, and three to four. And they cap it off because I guess they don't want to embarrass anybody. The top of the chart says eight or more times a week. <laughs> Do you know how many millions of people answered eight or more times a week? <laughs> have you eaten one of those things lately? Yeah. No. Most of us know that we'd probably be sent into a diabetic coma if we ate one of those things. <laughs> Not only that, but I don't know about you, you get something that sweet, my teeth just plain hurt from eating something that sweet. But a lot of people love these things. And what usually happens is this. We're sitting at our desk, we're doing some work, we get hungry, we grab whatever's in our desk, and if it be a ho-ho or a Twinkie, so be it. And yes, we eat it, and we feel great. We get that sugar rush, and then usually within about a half hour, 45 minutes, we're crashing, and we're hungry all over again. And then if we do what human nature tells us, we reach back into that drawer and look for another ho-ho or Twinkie. But basically, we are eating something that has no nutritional value, something that cannot sustain us, something that is empty, it is devoid of all things. And that's what happens when we live apart from the Word of God. That is what happens when we do not see the bread of life that is in front of us in Jesus Christ. And that is what he was trying to get over on all of these people who were following him. You see, we heard in last week's gospel lesson that Jesus fed 5,000 and they said men. It has been estimated, as I explained last week, that that crowd, including women and children, could have been upwards of 15 to 20,000 people. And he fed them all with two fish and five little barley biscuits. And not only did he feed them all, but his disciples gathered up 12 full baskets of what was left over. This was a miracle. And we all know that a miracle is a sign, and it is a sign pointing to God, and God was standing right in front of them. These folks weren't paying attention. How do we know that? Because when they woke up, Jesus was no longer there. They wanted to find him. Why did they want to find him? Because they were hungry. They wanted to be fed. They found someone who could actually do things, like give them everything they wanted. In fact, we heard that Jesus, the reason why he retreated, the reason why he wanted to get away, was because he knew they were going to try by force to make them his, their king. And so he left them. And these people came because they wanted something from Jesus. Now, does Jesus get upset for them for wanting this? Not really. I like Martin Luther's way of explaining this crowd to us. Let me, let me show you how Martin Luther doesn't mince words about this crowd. In his commentary, he said, this crowd saw Jesus the way lice seek a scalp. Those tiny bugs love your head and hair because it's a warm place to lay their eggs. They seek you just to use you. And that kind of sums up, I think, most of the people in the crowd. It's not because they believe, but rather because they want it. Now, Jesus doesn't say that's a bad thing. In fact, we don't hear him chastising them because they come seeking him because they want something. What Jesus says to them is simply this. Make sure that you want the right thing. Do not be looking for hohos and Twinkies, but seek that which can endure forever. Look for the bread of life, and I am the bread of life. And if you partake of me, you will never hunger again. But if you keep chasing after those ho-hos and Twinkies, you're always going to be hungry. You will never be satisfied. You will always be on a high and you will crash and burn. And what he was referring to were all the things of the world. 
those things that we as humans deem to be well necessary and needed. In fact, those things that we actually put in place of God. Those things that we hold on to so tight that we no longer have our hands open wide to receive from God, but we are holding on to what become anchors in this world. Things that are unimportant, things that will do us no good. I mean, think about it. You can't take anything from this earth with you. But rather, if you are holding on to God, then you will not only have Him here and now, but you will be with Him into eternity. In fact, that's what Jesus tells us this morning. That I am the bread of life, and those who believe in me will have eternal life. And that seems to be a very simple thing, and yet we overcomplicate it, don't we? I mean, I know so many folks, they've been raised in the faith, they've been here longer than I've been alive in many different churches, and most of the time it goes something like this. I usually talk to them about faith, I talk to them about growing in faith and staying in the faith, I talk to them about doing Bible studies and doing scripture readings and everything else, and usually about that time after their eyes glaze over, they kind of do this, and they say, Pastor, I did my time. I did my time in Sunday school when I was a kid. I did my time in confirmation. I'm good. I know that Jesus loves me. I'm saved. And, you know, they got part of that life. But here's what happens when we have an attitude like that. When we have an attitude like that, when we decide for ourselves, you know what? I'm good with an hour every Sunday in church. And then I lead my life. I'm out of the world. You see, when we don't stay in God's Word, and that is by reading Scripture, that is by doing Bible studies, that is by having groups that we gather with and share our faith, that is when we don't go out into the world and share with others what it is that we come to believe, well then, we are eating ho-hos and Twinkies. You see, that's what Satan wants. He wants to be able to come in our lives and he wants us to look at that bread of life and say, yes, I know what that is. And maybe early on in our faith or maybe after we've had an experience in life where God has been there and he's seen us through, we say, thank you, God. I could not have done this without you. Thank you, Jesus. And yes, it might bring us to tears. It may even bring us down to our knees. But then over time, we seem to forget about that. It's kind of like, well, for us around here, does anybody, has anybody ever gone to Seraphines? Yeah, okay. How about Kaleos? Okay. Uh, I'm sure Olive Garden. Okay. What do those restaurants have in common? What's that? They're Italian. They're Italian. Okay, what is the first thing they bring out to your table? Bread. Bread. Bread, lots of bread. In fact, at Serafini's, it got to be a standing joke. When my two brothers and I walked in this place, from the time we were about six years old onward, that when they brought out the basket of bread, we immediately asked for another one. We would go through three baskets of bread before salad. And once in a while, we'd let my parents have a piece. <laughs> but here's the interesting part, whether it is the three of us or maybe all of you. That bread is so tempting and it smells and looks so good, the first thing you do, even before you order sometimes, is grab a piece of that bread and you start eating it. And it is wonderful and it tastes really good. Sometimes you continue to eat from it. My brothers and I, before they even set the thing on the table, we were grabbing out <laughs> the basket. And we would just level it. But then what happens? Well, the salad comes. And the bread is not quite as important. And then the entree comes, and that bread is almost like a distant memory. And pretty soon there's dessert, and maybe coffee, or if you're old enough, a drink after dinner. And that bread is no longer even thought of. You see, that's what Satan tries to do with us. We have that bread of life. We have Jesus Christ. We have that Word of God, but because we're not immersed in that Word, because we're not spending time with that Word of God, 
it becomes a distant memory. It is no longer our focus. It is no longer what is most important. It is no longer the food that we crave and need. We then switch over to the hobos and Twinkies and we crash and burn because that will not sustain us. Jesus never gets upset at the people for wanting. Rather, he gets upset because they do not want what they truly need. And that is him. And I pray that each and every one of us come to understand that. That no matter where we are in life, we have all that we need so long as we have Christ in our lives. So long as we have that word made real in Jesus Christ. God has blessed us beyond blessing. And if we are open to that word of God, He will then use us to be part of the miracles that happen all around. But first, we must not just believe and let it there. We must daily turn to Him and we must daily consume Him. We must daily take this word of God into our lives. Just as today, we will take that same word of God into our bodies. And hopefully it is not just that one and done for us that we truly believe that this is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that as we take Him into our bodies, He becomes one with us and we become one with Him. And therefore, when we go out into the world, we become Christ in the world. And that we are able to share His love and His grace and mercy with whomever we encounter. That as we have been blessed, we become a blessing to those that we meet. But that can only happen if we truly go for the bread instead of the Twinkies and the Hocos. And that is what God asks us to do this day. is to go for the real food. To go for that which will sustain us not only here and now, but for all eternity. God stood before those people. He told them in as plain a language as He could. And they refused to believe Him. God and Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life. And they took offense at that. They took offense because the rabbis in their teachings in those days, when they talked about the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, they refer to that as the bread of life. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You have the word of God written, but I am the word of God standing before you. Listen to me. Didn't we hear that voice in the cloud more than once? God says, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now he stands before them all. And he says, I am the bread of life. They also took offense to that because they heard the words, I am. And we heard those words being uttered to Moses, did we not, on the mount? When Moses said, who is it that I should tell them that sent me? And God, in that burning bush, that voice from heaven said, tell them I am. That I am the God of Jacob and Isaac. That I am the God of all, I am the God of what was, what is, and what shall be, that I am. And therefore, those who heard this took great offense as well. Jesus could not have told them any more plainly who he was. And he showed them in many signs, and yet they wanted the hohos and the Twinkies. They wanted their comfort. They wanted Jesus to do things for them that would make life easier and make their life more satisfying in the here and now. And what Jesus came to do for them and for us is to make sure that our life into eternity has been assured. And that only happens when we truly believe with every fiber of our being that He is God. And that he came into the world, not to condemn, but to save. And if we trust in him, 
We will be with him, not only here and now, but we shall be with him in paradise. And so I say to you, as Christ would say, ditch the hobos and twinkies. Grab a hold of the real thing. Yearn for that bread that comes from heaven, that which is the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry, reassure those who are despairing, and accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, you know better than we do that there is so much suffering and sickness, so much hurt, so much devastation in this world. Father, we lift up to you those that we do know, those who are in need of your healing, your restoration. They are in need of your hope and your care. They are in need of guidance. But most of all, Father, they are in need of your presence in their lives. Let them come to know you. Let them come to know your voice. Let them feel your very being within them. And let them know, Father, that you are the hope of the world. We lift up to you today James, Harley, Betty, Richard, Heather, Stephanie, Bonnie, Patty, Greg, Lori, Cindy, Nick, Mary, Betty Sue, Norma, Christine, Eloise, Nicole, Kathy, Sandy, Fran, Amy, Hazel, Carl, Anita, Sue, Dick, Rick, Margie, Harry, Kathy, Jessica, Vera, Clara, Amber, Suzanne, Dustin, Shirley, Melanie, Mike, Diane, Marsha, Marilyn, Tina, Mariah, Rob, Maurice, Donnie, Darlene, Elizabeth, Rosa, Betsy, Pastor McKilvery, Bishop Lausanne. We lift up Braden, Tim, Lindsay, Linda, Gia, Gary, Wanda, Emmy, Brooksy, Vicky, Katie, Bill. We lift up Vicky and Faith. We lift up Lily. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Paul's family and Patty's family. Help them to know, Father, that even in the darkest times, you are with us. And that if they look, your light will shine through. That the promises you made so long ago are true today. That as we are baptized into the life of Christ, we are also baptized into a death like His, and most certainly we are baptized into a resurrection like His. Let them hold on to this promise and this hope that one day we shall all be together again in Your kingdom. And in the meantime, Father, be with them, care for them, and comfort them. We lift these and all of our prayers to You, O God, confident in the promise of Your saving love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.